Whoops. Okay. So welcome to the second gen talk. <laughs> and today I was going to talk about our trip to Costa Rica that I did with my mom in 2016. Um, we traveled right after um, Christmas that year. We were on the trip for 14 days. We left in early January. Um, it was a primarily a birding um, adventure expedition. We um, traveled a lot of different places in Costa Rica and stayed in some of the premier birding lodges around the country. And our guide who's in the picture with mom and, and myself, that's Leo Gregarious. He's, um, he was our guide and he's an excellent bird, bird guide on our trip. And his father actually was the co-author of the sort of quintessential book of Costa Rica that's pictured up here, The Birds of Costa Rica. And that is published, written by his father. And so he was a really excellent guide and <laughs> a very patient guide. <laughs> And, and great at finding all the birds and, and showing everybody in the group where they all were. And so just, uh, we traveled with a company called Road Scholar, which um, some of you might have done trips with. Um, and we're, that's who the group we're going to Grand Canyon with, hopefully in November, some of us on the call. And it was an excellent group to travel with. And we went also to the Galapagos with Road Scholar. And mom, you've done many Road Scholar trips over the years. Yeah. Yes, I have done many, uh, and we, we just had to cancel one because of this uh, COVID. Right. But, uh, we, we've done lots of, of, of road scholarships. So um, just a little bit of background on Costa Rica. I think some of you maybe have been there before, but just so you know, i just give you a little background. Costa Rica is in Central America. It's bordered by Nicaragua to the north um, and the Caribbean Sea to the northeast, Panama to the southeast, and the Pacific Ocean on the south west and Ecuador to the south of Cocos Island, which is a little island that sits off of Costa Rica. It's a population of around 5 million in a land area of about 19,714 square miles. An estimated 333,980 people live in the capital, which is the largest city of San Jose, and around 2 million people live in the surrounding metropolitan area. Uh, Costa Rica, you know, prides itself on uh, pur Pura Vida, on um, peaceful life. Um, it has consistently performed favorably in the Human Development Index. It placed 68th in the world uh, in 2019 and 5th in Latin America. Um, it's been cited by the United Nations Development Program as having attained a much higher human development than other countries at the same income levels, with a better record on human development and equality than the median of the region. So it's a very happy place to visit and very friendly people. Um, as you guys probably know, it has very progressive environmental policies. It's actually the only country to meet all five of the uh, UNDP criteria to uh, establish to measure environmental sustainability. And it was ranked 42nd in the world and third in the Americas in the 2016 Environmental Performance Index. And was twice ranked as the best performing country in the New Economics Foundation's Happy Planet Index which measures environmental sustainability. And it was identified as the greenest country in the world in 2009. Uh, it plans to become carbon, a carbon neutral country by 2021. And in 2019, 99% of its electricity was generated from green sources, particularly hydro, wind, geothermal, and solar. So really pretty an amazing country um, in terms of what they've done for their environment. Um, and it's, um, but it's also a very small country and it's a very popular place for bird watchers. Um, it is in the Birdwitch neotropical region and has a huge number of species for its area. The official bird list published by Costa Rican Rare Birds um, counted 922 species in 2019 in the country of Costa Rica. And our, our trip, I meant to look it up, but I think I know we saw at least over close to 300 species of different birds in 14 days that we were traveling there. So for a lot of people who um, want to bird in, in the tropics, Costa Rica is the first choice. Um, it has very topography and has a wide diversity of tropical and subtropical sub bird species. Um, it's a very safe place to visit and has very good tourism infrastructure. There's lots of nice accommodations for birders to stay in and it's, uh, the birding is easy. It's uh, level places to walk um, and it's a great place for people visiting the tropics for the first time because many of the birds might be new to people um, traveling there. 
So um, that's a little, a little background in Costa Rica. It has tropical climate year round. There are two seasons there. The summer or the dry season is December to April and the winter or rainy season is May to November. So this is just a little map I made on uh, Google Maps and uh, this isn't exactly the route we took but it kind of shows you, whoops, um, kind of our, um, how we traveled uh, throughout the country. We covered a broad area. <laughs> we spent a lot of time driving. Um, so we started um, in uh, San Jose at the Buena Vista Hotel. Um, our first day, this is our first day arriving there. And we had uh, some nice tropical drinks uh, waiting for us and we got to relax and enjoy some of the beautiful scenery in that hotel. Um, um, and then we were up early, early every morning and this was kind of a miracle for mom because she doesn't like to get up very early. So um, this was our first morning from the hotel uh, up at the sunrise and there's mom. <laughs> actually getting up in the morning. Um, and you know, we started seeing our first tropical birds right away um, in the first day. And so this is a blue um, crowned motmot. Motmots are a very pop common species that you would see there um, in Costa Rica. And it's like one of my favorites, known for that little circular tail at the bottom and this big blue um, on the top. We also saw this guy, it's a, braid, a bard's trogon. Um, trogons are another tropical species of birds, so I was pretty excited to be seeing some of these birds on the first day we were there. Pretty exciting. Okay. And uh, some amazing flowers as well, all throughout the country. Um, I think this one was a coffee plant. And then this is our, our sturdy vehicle that we traveled in our van that took us all over Costa Rica. Um, so after we left Buena Vista Hotel, we headed down towards um, our, the um, south, the Pacific side down towards the Skinas Rainforest Lodge. But we stopped on the way first for our first uh, lunch in Costa Rica. Um, all the restaurants are open air there and you know, you can have great birding from the, from the lunch spots and dinner spots. Um, so this is a typical um, site of all of us with our binoculars glued to our faces throughout the entire trip, um, trying to see as many birds as we could see. There's and that some of the group that was with us, all very um, dedicated and enthusiastic birders. And some of them are the flowers everywhere and bananas and open air restaurants. Um, Mom, this is, you remember this is a typical lunch, it's called a casada. Um, it's beans and rice um, and then usually plantains and then uh, some sort of meat, uh, chicken, fish, or steak. And um, this was a staple lunch that you would have pretty much every day. <laughs> every, every time you went someplace. Every time you went someplace. Uh, for lunch was always a casada and it was always, you had a choice of either chicken, steak, or fish. And then they would have a, ref oh, they call it a refresher or a refresco drink, which was some sort of um, juice or uh, fresh juice that you could have, uh, you know, all different flavors of juices. There's a close up of the casada. <laughs> So we ate a lot of rice and beans. No, we never finished. <laughs> yeah, there was no lack of food on the trip. <laughs> and so the first day, and this is, I have to say, this is not my picture. I stole this picture from the web, but um, we spent an inordinate amount of time on the first day searching for this guy. He's called a turquoise cutinga. Uh, and um, it, we were searching in some really not so nice locations of Costa Rica because our guide had been told that, that there was a cutinga that could be found in this uh, kind of like, I don't know, industrial area, I guess yeah, you said. Industrial area. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we searched and searched and searched, but we did actually find him. Um, uh, briefly saw him, but I didn't get a picture like this. <laughs> but, um, you know, that blue turquoise picture, uh, color really shows up when you're looking for him. Wow. So that's the Katinga. And then just, you know, traveling through beautiful countryside and, the, and seeing all the rainforest jungles. Um, and trees and vegetation. And this was our first spot we stopped at. It's called the Talari Lodge. It was actually probably the most rustic of all the places we stayed. It, it was kind of a little bit on the, you know, more rustic side, <laughs> but, um, but it was fine. Everything was always clean and, um, and it had a nice, really beautiful restaurant um, where we had dinner and then we had breakfast there, uh, all open air, you know, in, up in the jungle. And we saw some of these first, other, some new birds too. This is a Kiskaday. He's got yellow on his chest and a little white um, on his face. 
and uh, kind of a bird you can see actually here in America. Say that name again, Jenny. The Kiskaday. 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 And then is this guy is. A quiz? What? Is there going to be a quiz? Yes. <laughs> and this is the mass ty ty titra titra the mass titra T I T Y R. Another common bird in Costa Rica. Common. And there's mom ready for another day of action. <laughs> and you still had your hiking stick at that point because I think you had just, well, you were a little past your hip replacement. I was past my hip replacement. Yeah. So that we're. Was, at, that, that was the Galapagos. The Galapagos, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so we have, we, after we left the Tulare Lodge, we headed down towards, uh, we we're still continuing down towards Esquinas, um, but we stopped at um, a place called the um, Los Cusingos Bird Refuge. And um, this is the, um, the home of um, Alexander Scutch. Um, and he was a very, um, Nina might know his name. He's a very famous um, ornithologist, uh, naturalist, writer. Um, he wrote co-author of the Guides of Bird, Birds of Costa Rica. And he lived in a very simple house in, um, in this reserve for over 60 years. He, he lived to be 99 years old. Um, and he studied all the birds of this reserve um, his whole life. Um, so it was really neat to get to go see his house and, and the path, walk the path that he walked um, his whole life there. And um, he has a lot of the places in Costa Rica will have like bird feeders where they put out fruit um, and that was a great way to see a lot of the birds they would come in to feed on the fruit that they put out for them and there was particularly a lot of great birds at their bird feeder in at the Scutch house and this is a, a these are cherry tanagers uh, we saw a lot of tanagers um, on our trip because it was migration time so the birds from North America were migrating down into Costa Rica so that's why it's a great time to go in the winter to see all these birds. And these guys were really sweet. More of the cherries tanager. You can see where they're coming into the feeder. And that's, so I'm sorry, these were fema females and then this is the male cherries tanager. Wow. How different. How different. And then, yeah. And this is a, um, keep referring to my nose, I keep forgetting, a blue gray tanager, another tanager species. And this is the, the sooty cat, the dusky cat fly, no, the sooty cat tanager. <laughs> Even I'm getting confused. The sooty cap, sooty cap bush tanager. <laughs> sooty cap bush tanager. We had a lot of fun trying to understand what the guide was saying and with all of his heavy accent, <laughs> right? Trying to understand all the bird names. And this is one of my favorites. This is the summer, summer tanager and just really beautiful bird. And this is but a. We have a tanager also, Jenny, right? In Florida. In the north. Yeah, so a lot of these birds you would find in the north in the in the summer, and then they come down to Costa Rica for the winter. So it's a real haven for 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 migrating birds. And this is a silver-throated tanager. Wow, how beautiful! Wow. And these little guys over here are. Um, do you remember these guys, Mom? The honey yeah, creepers. No. Honey Who creepers. The honey creepers. The uh, oh, green. Oh yeah, the, the really red the red-legged honey creeper, a male and a female. Oh my god! Another summer tanager. Oh. And this one is my favorite. This is the flame-throated tanager. Mm. So it's just so great, you know, to see all these different birds coming into the feeders. It was really, really exciting. So eventually, we made our way down towards the was Golfito, which is on the Pacific side of um, of Costa Rica, down close to the ocean. We actually got to stop for a little bit to see the ocean, the Pacific, um, as we headed into the lodge. And uh, uh, as we came into the lodge, it's, it's called the Skinas Rainforest Lodge. The bridge was actually out um, to travel over, so we had to go through the river. <laughs> we were a little unsure about whether the whether the bus would actually make it or sink, um, you know, or in the mud. And we all had to keep moving from side to side of the bus to keep it through. And uh, so that was some of the pictures of us going through the river. <laughs> mom, you weren't, mom wasn't too sure about that situation. I'm so nervous. <laughs> nice picture. <laughs> we did make it through. And eventually we got to the lodge. <laughs> so Esquina. this is Esquinas Esquina. yeah. Rainforest Lodge. And it's very um, tropical because we're way down by the Pacific at this point. 
Um, so lots of uh, flowers and, you know, river uh, ponds and very tropical vegetation. And we had some other non-bird species. These are caimans. There's a guy. <laughs> and then these are my favorites that we saw on Eskenis. This is the fiery build arasari. A-R-C-A-R-A-C-A-R-I-S. Arasaris. And they're the toucan family. They, they, they look like toucans. Yes. But they're not toucans, but they're very not similar. Toucans. Right. Really beautiful. Mm. And this is a, um, a great carousel, a really tall, flightless bird. Say again, Jenny? The carousel, the carousel, the great carousel. The carousel. He's very big. Yeah, and he's flightless. And he's flightless. Why are we looking at his butt? No, no. He no, that's his tail, yeah. Yeah. There's his butt. Oh, I see his butt. Oh, yeah, okay. Maybe I should unmute people so they can ask questions, or I don't know. If you want to, you know, unmute yourself, if you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself, if you can. Uh, and then it's hard to see this guy, but in the center there is a little, um, a little rail, a gray-necked wood rail. You can kind of see him um, in the center of the picture. So we started seeing some trop, some, some water birds down here, some shorebirds and rails, um, and we saw some other wading birds. Yeah. And then just a picture of some of the dining, you know, again at, at uh, Esquinas, it's all open air, um, lodges, really beautiful vegetation all around there. And this is just some of the, some of the grounds and some of the rooms. Okay. Jen, were they feeding them bananas before? Yeah, bananas. Yeah, bananas. Whatever they had left over from the breakfast table. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jenny, how many people were in the group? Oh, that's a good question. I think there were like, I don't remember, 24, 20, something like that. It wasn't oh, wow. huge. That's yeah. A lot. No, I don't, maybe it was less, but I, it was a very, um, and so this was just the grounds of Eskinas. It was really pretty there, I thought. And this was our, our, our little oh, right. room. Yeah, our place, our room inside. Rustic, but you know, very nice. Some of the grounds around Eskinas. And they had a great swimming pool, swimming uh, pool. <laughs> and mom got in. It was hot in Esquinas. It was uh, hot and tropical, you know, warm. Uh, that's a Katie did that we saw at breakfast, an insect. <laughs> More of the restaurant. So um, after we left Esquinas, we drove over um, to the east to um, to a uh, biological reserve called Las Cruces, um, which was a um, uh, really a botanical garden. Um, and uh, it's uh, well known for its uh, flowers and protecting uh, uh, tropical plants. There's a lot of um, conservation that goes on there and a lot of uh, rare and endangered plants as well as birds. Some of the grounds. Mm. And we had a really pretty room at at, uh, at the biological center. Yeah, and, and the big. Uh, and it was all a big deck. Dancing. Yeah, that could look out over the rainforest. Yeah. And that was like what our view in the morning from our beds, getting up early again for a bird walk. And uh, it, at this place, they had a, um, a canopy tower, um, so that was really fun. Um, and we got to walk, go up the canopy tower even though I think you were pretty scared going up there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, great views from the top. <laughs> and this is a rare bird that we found on the trip. It's called a Schiffophonus. It's not oh. the, a Schiffophonus. <laughs> Schiffophonus? Phonus, yeah. Not the prettiest bird, but uh, kind of rare. And uh, they were very excited. Um, our guide was very excited to find it. I think actually you were on the, uh, you went on, we split up and you went on a, yes. a vegetation, a, bird, a plant walk and some of yes. us were birding and we, we found this guy. So, and a lot of these pictures are uh, actually, t uh, the guide took through my iPhone by, they call it digiscoping. So they put the, the iPhone up to the telescope, the spotting scope. 
and use the magnification of the spotting scope to take a picture on your iPhone. It's pretty amazing. And they had great um, feeding little platforms as well at the place. And uh, here's a fun video. Whoops, hold on, it's a video. Let me play it of a, a toucan. Okay. Oh, that was from the breakfast table. <laughs> like the Fruit Loops guy, right? <laughs> and I was very happy to be seeing all these birds. <laughs> And again, I got to see my, my favorite, the blue crown mot mot. There's a pretty picture of him. A mot mot again. Mot mot again. And uh, there's a little video of a mot of the mot mot. Hold on. Let me get it to play. Here we go. It's chowing down, huh? Very pretty. Is he making that noise? Yes. Yeah, uh, some of the other birds too, but yeah, partly him. And again, we have the honey creeper and the silver throated tanager. And this is one of my favorites. This is called the speckled tanager. And uh, mm -hmm. really pretty guy. Oh. Really pretty. What does he call speckled? Speckled tanager. There are many tanagers. <laughs> yeah. A silver throated tanager again. And another view of a toucan, chestnut mandible toucan. A what? A chestnut mandible toucan. Mandible? Chestnut, chestnut? mandible mandible toucan. Mandible. There he is again. And then, you know, we this is just to give you an idea of like, you know, we spent a lot of time walking, looking, walking slowly. <laughs> And uh, our guide, do you want to talk about? Point out your guide again, Jenny. What? Point you, out your guide. You, uh, I don't know if they can see my feet. He's in the front with the, the front. holding the scope. Do you want to you want to talk about how patient he was with finding oh, the birds? Oh, he was very patient with me. And I could not find the animals, the birds, all the time. On Then he would say, Jackie, can you see the bird? Can you see <laughs> the bird? Do you see the bird yet? <laughs> And then he would circle the bird with his with a with yeah, a, mark yeah, a pointer, a laser pointer that he used. A, point, to, a laser pointer, and he'd say, "Do you see the bird, Jackie?" <laughs> he would put the laser pointer around the bird to help you find it. And you know, these birds are moving very fast through the forest, so it's very challenging. But he was pretty amazing at getting everybody to see everything. So, <laughs> and uh, just more of the forest. So then we left that. The crew says. And we traveled way up into the mountains up to this beautiful lodge called Seve Gray uh, uh, Reserve. And so just to give you an idea, the drive from, to Seve Gray, we went from an elevation of 2,500 feet up to 11,000 feet um, to the highest portions of the Cerro de la Muerte Mountains. And then we descended deep into the San Dorado Valley. That was about at 7,000 feet. So. Yeah. Yeah, so the uh, so and on the way we stopped to see some of these hummingbirds at um, different places along the uh, mountain ridges, and oh yeah, and we saw this guy, which is a sun bittern, which was a very cool bird, um, and he got a snake. Yeah, so there's a little. Bit of this <laughs> yeah, snake. Snake. Yeah. 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 And then we could Google Drive. Oh, trying to kill the shrimp. He's trying to kill it. <laughs> Maybe. So just uh, this is also taken from their web, but I wanted to show you what a sun bittern is famous for. They're famous for their display of their feathers on their wings. So I'll show you what this looks like when he opens it up. Oh shoot. Oh boy. Crashed. Hold on. Hopefully this will play. There it goes. You gotta wait for it. <laughs> Very 
go. Oh. Oh, my. Yeah, it's a display for to attract a mate or if it's scared or protect its young. And we did see it through that. We saw the the colors on its wings, but I didn't get a picture of it, but it's really cool. Okay, I gotta figure out how to get out of this now. Okay, and uh, whoops, that's still playing. Hold on. Sorry, hold on. Technical difficulties. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, so from current flight. So again, we saw a lot of the local, you know, uh, livestock as we were driving around and looking at egrets in the fields. Um, and then we stopped on the way up to the mountains to see a, a very intent that we see this one specific bird that's found up in the mountains called a volcano junco. <laughs> and we traveled all over trying to find him. You remember that walking around looking for the junco? And just to get an idea, this is the kind of habitat that he lives in. So you can imagine how hard it is to find that bird in that habitat. <laughs> and that's when, that's when we needed that guide. And he'd, <laughs> he'd circle the bird and he'd had set up his, his uh, body scope. Shutter. Right. And, put us, and, and then we'd all take turns going through the, the looking at the bird. The spotting scope. Yeah. Yeah. And then eventually we made it to Save Gray. Um, so, like I said, Savegre Hotel is located in the San Gerardo de Dota in the Tal Talamanca Mountains, south of San Jose, and it is famous for what's on my hat here, the Quetzal, the resplendent Quetzal, which is the bird that everyone comes to Costa Rica to see. Um, and uh, we were very, very fortunate to see him, uh, and I'll get into that. Um, it's a very um, precious ecosystem at Savegre. It's a cloud forest. Is filled with you know large numbers of mammals, amphibians, amazing plants, and birds, and it's a really beautiful lodge. Um, we just loved it there. I would love to go back there again sometime. Um, the valley combines high oak and cloud forest with open grasslands and forest edges. Um, and we this is some of the road we traveled down. So we, we traveled a long way up to the mountains and then way down this dirt road into this uh, valley where the lodge is. Um, and is very, again, also very environmentally conscious of their environment and tries to preserve and conserve water and, and waste as much as they can. This was our little room in Savegre. So oh, wow. Savegre was high up in the mountains. So going from the tropical feel of Esquinas to the chilly mountains of Savegre, it was very cold <laughs> in the morning and at night there. But they had just beautiful flowers all around the lodge. And that beautiful that tour, go back, Jenny. Go, uh, that, These guys to the to the left, the that tour. There's the white ones, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and so and then I mean hummingbirds everywhere here. Hummingbirds everywhere. And these Japanese tourists running around with gigantic cameras, like like three times their size, taking and pictures and running with the giant cameras, you know, everywhere. So it's pretty amazing. I mean, yeah, the whole thing. Well, and the hummingbirds as well. And yeah. the hummingbirds, right. And so this is some of the flowers. And so this was our room, and we had a fireplace because <laughs> it was so chilly <laughs> and beautiful beds, bathroom. With lights, with candles. Yeah, flowers. And Mom was very happy there. <laughs> So do you want to talk about the day we saw the Quetzal? Yeah. And you want to talk about how, how that, what happened that morning? Well, well, you can, you can kind of, we, we started out in breakfast and we couldn't, we looked for the Quetzal first before breakfast. No right. Quetzal. Right. So we went into breakfast and we got to breakfast and then during breakfast, someone said, oh, there's a Quetzal out there. Run. So we left the breakfast where we were and we ran to see the Quetzal. But and there wasn't. Came, but there wasn't. Ahead. But there still wasn't one. <laughs> there still wasn't one. So we came back again, and then we came out of the breakfast finally, the third time, the second time, and there was a kettle, uh, and we all ran after it. You know, to show it. Are you going to show it, Jenny? Yeah. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> 
So yeah, so I look back at one point and mom's saying, you know, leave the cane, I'm just gonna go. And then uh, the housekeepers were running with her, helping her and everyone in the whole, everyone in the lodge was running to see the Quetzal. <laughs> it was like, you know, uh, I mean, if you're not a huge birder, but I mean, even if you're not a birder, this bird's a magnificent. So, you know, um, and you know, seeing it so close up was incredible. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background of the, the Quetzal, so it's uh, 14 to 16 inches long, but it can have up to 26 inches of its tail streamer. So this long tail here. Um, it's the largest representative of the Trojan order. Um, it's in, like I said, it's in the Trojan family. It's found from Mexico to Western Panama. Um, it has this green body and red chest. Um, a lot of people call it the Christmas bird. Um, depending on the light, you know, his feathers sh shine all kinds of different colors depending on the light. Um, and it's very um, unique to this area. Um, it, um, it played a huge important role in various types of uh, Mesoamerican mythology. It's the national bird of Guatemala. Um, it's found on the country's flags and coats of arms. Uh, so it's, you know, it's been a long history of um, mythology around this bird as well. Uh, they're, and they're very specialized fruit eaters, um, and primarily they eat wild avocados. Um, and so you can find them in these certain areas where those trees are found, and they eat, they're kind of a late rising bird, they eat late in the morning, so that's why, you know, sometimes you don't see them till later in the morning, and they have to regurgitate the pit of the avocado. So you'll find them just sitting, roosting in areas after they've eaten, um, so they have to wait and regurgitate that pit. So that's a good chance of seeing them. You know, and people travel from all over the world to see, to come to Savegre to see the, the Quetzal, but we were very lucky that this bird happened to be very close to the lodge that day. Um, Cause sometimes they're not, and you have to do a long hike and a long walk. And, you know, I was worried that mom wouldn't be able to, to do that. So we were very lucky that we got to see him for so long. I mean, I think we stayed hours watching the birds in yeah, some more pictures. There are actually two. There was this bigger one, and then there was a smaller, probably a female. There's another picture of him. Jenny, can you tell him a little bit about the two men that, that started the Segway Lodge? Yeah, I'm going to talk about that, yeah. Oh, okay. There's some more pictures of the Quetzal, little one. And that's one of my favorites. Um, oh. A little close-up of him. Wow. Um, and so, you know, they're very um, endangered because they have very specific areas where they can only be and they've been hunted for their feathers and, um, you know, but it, it was, it was considered in their, in their, in the Mesoamerican rulers, they considered it a crime to kill a Quetzal. Um, so the bird was captured and then its tail feathers were plucked and they would use the tail feathers in their decor, in their headdresses, but they wouldn't kill it. Another picture of it. So that's what we looked like after we saw it. <laughs> As a happy, we found the Quetzal pictures. <laughs> and so that's one of the streams in Savegre. And so yeah, so the whole lodge, this is a picture of the pioneer, they call the pioneers. So um, uh, this, the person that founded Savegre, uh, Don Chacon and his family, he first arrived in this valley in 1954, and they were the first pioneers to ever settle in this valley. And he basically, you know, lives in a cave for like the first five to 10 years of- With his brother, ranch. right? With his brother, trying to ranch and trying to grow apples and fruit, which he, they do have now a fruit orchid, or a fruit um, trees, and they actually introduced trout into the river for fly fishing, and they've just basically built this whole lodge, and the whole family still works in some capacity um, in in the hotel. And we actually got to meet um, the the old, the old owner. He came and talked to us. Um, so it's just a really neat lot of family history in that lodge and in that resort, and kind of amazing what they've done with the place. Um, and it, the the hotel also hosts the um, the Quetzal Education Research Center complex which is a cooperative between the family and um, a university in Oklahoma that studies the Quetzal there. So they do a lot of conservation for the birds there as well. And they set aside 400 hectares of the forest as a biological reserve, 80% of which is old growth um, and other areas are in reforestation areas. So one of the days we went on these um, open Jeeps 
and we got to drive um, way up into the mountains of the surrounding forest uh, and I got to see some more birds and just the views. Uh, it was really fun, you know, a kind of off-road adventure. Mom wanted to drive at one point, but. <laughs> <laughs> and that's us with Leo, our guide, um, up in the mountains there. <laughs> some of the views from up there, very beautiful. And some more about their environmental. Um, uh, and then I'll just show you, this is a quick little video that just gives you a little bit more history about Savegre. Back on. I can't. Danny, are you recording this? Yes. I'm I just, I, I would love to go back again. It's so yeah. beautiful. So yeah, this, just, this is uh, sort of the reception area. It's all stone. This was the little area, the bar area. You can sit outside and have drinks and snacks. So there's beautiful flowers even in the bathroom. Uh, so then this is some of the other birds we saw along uh, outside of Seve Grace is a, a roadside hawk. This is the great guan, great crested guan. A scissor tail flycatcher. Wow. Pretty bird. A white crowned parrot. So some more flowers. So then eventually, I think we had two or maybe three nights at Savegre. Um, and then we headed back to our, our uh, final stop, um, which was to Rancho Naturalista, which is my shirt I have on. <laughs> So Rancho Naturalista um, is also a world-renowned premier birding lodge uh, where like, world-famous birders and ornithologists come um, to particularly see a little tiny hummingbird uh, that is only found there called the snow-capped hummingbird. Um, so Rancho Naturalista is composed of 125 acres of pre-montane. So now we're on the Caribbean slope, the Caribbean side of the rainforest. Um, and it's known for its hummingbird feeders and its pools. So I'll talk a little bit about that. But this is sort of the main 
house of Rancho. It has like a main house with some rooms there and then little surrounding little um, bungalows throughout the property. That's me in front of Rancho. And there's a quick little video again to show you some of Rancho. Takes it a minute, minute for this to start working. a good little example of like what Rancho Naturalista is like. If we can go to the next slide, it gets me out of here. I had to go to close. Oh. Hold on. Okay. So, uh, so like you saw in the video, uh, it's famous for its um, balcony, uh, where they have hundreds of hummingbirds coming to feed on the feeders, and you can just sit on the balcony and have coffee and and watch wow. all the hummingbirds. So these are the little videos that I took of the hummers, hummingbirds at the on the balcony. And you have to remember that there's probably like ten of these feeders. all different kinds of species of hummingbirds. Um, they're really hard to identify because the colors change. Um, oh my god, there's like 10 of them on this wood feeder. The green hermit came in right there at that end. There's the big guy with the big bills are called a green hermit. Those guys, most of them are white necked jacobins. Here right now. And here's a little another close up video. really amazing uh, hummingbirds everywhere and then they also have this path um, that mom you didn't go down because it's a very long windy stairs that take you down to these this overlook where you can look at these pools of water um, I didn't actually take a picture of it but um, and the hummingbirds will come in and feed feet and bathe in these pools and um, like little coquettes and hummingbirds and then this is the famous guy that everybody comes to Rancho Naturalista to see is called the snow-capped hummingbird um, and he's, you know, uh, people have come from all over the world to photograph him and to see him. Um, 
And we were, uh, I was so worried because mom didn't go all the way down to the pools, which is the most common place to see the snow cap. But we ended up spending a morning, um, we didn't go on the bird walk and we just sat by the lodge and we were luck able enough to see him come in and feed. So that was the victory shot <laughs> of having seen the snow cap. And he goes by really fast, he's tiny. So I never got a picture of him. <laughs> But here's a little cute little video, one more video about the snow cap. There are no snow capped mountains in Costa Rica, but there is a little dynamic hummingbird that has a frosty looking head. The snow cap is barely eight centimeters. That's three inches for those who haven't caught up. And it lives only from Southern Honduras to Panama. It is normally found between 300 to 900 meters on the Caribbean slope in Costa Rica. It loves the nectar of small flowers of canopy trees and along forest edges. Like all animals that feed mostly on sugar, they are hyperactive. Clean feathers are healthy feathers. They are territorial and are constantly chasing each other away. This guy is getting bullied off his favorite perch. Yep, that's what he thinks of him. That was a really cute little bird, little tiny hummingbird. Only three inches, right? So he's tiny, tiny. <laughs> and he buzzes around like really fast in front of your face. And you're like, you know. <laughs> Uh, what I have to do is I have to close this guy. Come on, mouse. Hold on. There we go. Ready? Maybe. Hold on. Okay. And so, like, this is that day that when we were sitting to watch the hummingbirds, these all these photographers came to try to take a picture of the snow cap, and they never saw them. We had just seen them before they got there. But you know, people come just to take pictures and to see the snow cap, and um, they don't even stay. They're all set up with those big cameras. Yeah. yeah. And then this was a common, like, you know, viewpoint of what we were doing the whole time we were there. Our, our binoculars pressed uh, against our eyes, looking into the forest, trying to find the birds. <laughs> and this is just some of the trails around the Rancho Naturalista. Very pretty. Uh, this is a blue-gray tanager, another tanager. And this is a chocolaca. Chocolaca, yeah. And. Uh, one of the only mammals we really saw is a Cotamundi. Cotamundi at the feeder. And another great crested guan, another toucan. Kind of hard to see that guy, but he's like right here. This is his head right there. And then just some of the food at Rancho. So this is the common breakfast dish. Anybody who's been to Costa Rica will know Gallo Pinto. It's what they serve for breakfast. It's a mixture of rice and beans as a base, and they, um, they, they cook the beans really quickly and then the juices are consumed and then they combine it with rice and, and vegetables. And so you would always have that for breakfast um, with eggs and fruit, all kinds of fresh fruits. And, and some empanadas. And that's just the dining room at Rancho Naturalista. And some of the forest. And uh, last few guys, the bra another trogan, the bard's trogan. trogan. And there's Leo, <laughs> some hummingbirds, there's the views of from Rancho Naturalista. Oh, and that's an oropendula. And they make these crazy nests that they weave. They're a weaving bird and they weave these big nests and they hang them from the tree. So that's the this guy's nest. Wow. And then the wow. ranch, the tree, the there are a lot of um, working farms around Na Rancho Naturalista with cattle. Pineapples. That's one of the rows in Rancho Naturalista. Oh, so, and then Rancho, the other thing that Rancho Naturalista is famous for is what's called the moth light. So um, you can't really take pictures of it in the dark, but what, what this does is, so there's this big, um, like a, a sheet kind of here, and they project a light into that. So all the moths and everything are attracted to this light sheet. So they'll come and land on this sheet. And then the birds come in to feed on all the moths that are trapped and attracted to the light. 
So you come out before it's light out, we would come out and we would all be sitting here on benches and then you could identify and see all the birds that are now perched all over feeding on the insects that are attracted to the moss light. So not many lodges have this kind of setup um, and it's a great way to see some of the rarer birds. But this is when we came back during the daytime just to look for more birds there. You can kind of get an idea of how it works. We did get a little time of relaxation. <laughs> this was our room in Rancho Naturalista. A very modern bathroom. Some of the grounds. And then eventually we left Rancho Naturalista and we ended up back where we started at the Buena Vista Hotel <laughs> in San Jose. <laughs> And then we went to the airport and we got delayed for like nine hours or 10 hours trying to get out. Remember, the plane was way late and we had to drink a lot of Imperial beer. <laughs> <laughs> and then just one last thing is just a little taste of the rain of the forest. Wow, Jenny. Great job. Beautiful. Let's go back. <laughs> yeah, you should go back. I think Tara would like to go. <laughs> so I'll stop sharing and then everybody can uh, unmute themselves. Mm -hmm. Tara, are you going to go? What's up? <laughs> yeah, I've been to Costa Rica. Yeah, I didn't do all, all <laughs> of you guys did. did. I did saw you? some. I saw yeah. some. Quetzal? Did you see a Quetzal? Yes, I saw a Quetzal. <laughs> You did. <laughs> okay, you didn't have to go. Lucky duck. <laughs> what yeah, time was, of year did you guys go? So we went in January. Yeah, right after Christmas. Yeah. So, so are you guys ready for the bird quiz then? <laughs> I never knew what the birds were called. <laughs> Aaron was taking notes. So I was taking notes. Okay. okay. So we have, um, of course, with all the schools and such, uh, I have a great nephew and great niece who are going to be homeschooling. Oh. So I was going to log them in to see some of this, but of course I had my East Coast, West Coast <laughs> times wrong. Um, so I took some notes for Kelton, who's going to be in sixth grade. And... Uh, Maybe he can look some things up. Well, I, I recorded it, so you can watch it. I you recorded can do it. A concise school age, something. So at right. some point. Yeah. You know? um, but with a lot of homeschooling happening and online learning, that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and little Brandon, who's not little anymore. He's oh God, Brandon! Oh, that's a dark size. Boy. You know. How, how old is Brandon now? Well, Brandon is um, 10. Wow. And, uh, and I can't wear his shoes anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, Jonathan uh, is driving in Maryland. Jonathan is driving. <laughs> I know, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and Walter is going to vote. Yeah. <laughs> Walter is going to vote. Wow. Ooh. Wow. He'll be 18 in, in uh, September. Uh, uh, um, yeah, no. Yeah, September. Yeah. He's like, I'm staying in a retired pilot's house. Oh. He would like that. Airplane yeah. books oh, all over yeah. the place. <laughs> but yeah, if you're ever, you know, looking for a place to travel, I would highly recommend Costa Rica. And, you know, obviously that was a very intensive bird trip. But, you know, a lot of people go to Costa Rica for you know, adventure travel, lining, and, and that stuff. I mean, but we didn't do any of, any of that. But. Does a hotel offer tours, or you have to arrange that before you go? I mean, well, so, yeah, so we were with a group yeah. that, the same guide, you know, um, but you, you could get guides at all those hotels, um, oh, you know, okay. especially Savegre, I'm sure they have um, guides there that would take you out, you know, um, yeah, to see stuff. Vague, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and also I know Rancho Naturalista also has their own guys. Um, but the benefit of doing like the tour like we did is you, you cover a lot of the different habitats and you have the same guide every time. So you get, you know. You, you see a lot more. I mean, because yeah. you're going all over. 
Yeah, I mean, the whole country is completely bird crazy. Like, you just, you know, like, we'd see something and the bus would just, remember the bus driver, he would just stop the bus in the middle of the road and everyone would just come yeah, flying and, out. And he, he would find the birds, yeah, right? He was very good, too, yeah. He found a lot of the birds. And, and then and everyone in the country is just like, okay, that's fine. Like, they were never upset about it. They were just like, oh, there must be a bird that they're looking at. And, and the maid in Zegre was, was right behind me. Yeah. She was looking for the Quetzal, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, that was just a great morning because it was so funny how they'd say, okay, go, it's there, and we'd all run, and everyone's running, the Japanese tourists, and everyone's running, no, 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 and then come back, and then, no, no, and then run. <laughs> but yeah, it's a pretty uh, amazing place in terms of seeing birds, so, um, and, you know. How long were you there? Well, it was 14 days, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so it was a good long trip, yeah. What's your gin? What's that? And was it which year? Uh, well, it was 2000 and I wrote it down. Hold on. Let me find my notes. A year after my... A year yeah, 2000. My... Where's my first page? 2016. Oh. Yeah, so four years ago. Yeah. And, and I had to... That's great. That was, that was a good presentation I saw. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> We got a lot of good pictures and uh, that was, and every night we would go, um, we would all get together every night and go over the list and make sure we had all marked off, you know, and we were very, they were very serious about whether you actually saw it, whether you could mark it as having seen the bird. <laughs> Great. Yeah, nice job. That's why he was so concerned that I would see that bird. <laughs> Yeah, and there was this one, this one guy, one woman was a very, Nina would appreciate, it was a very serious birder, you know, and she had been wanting, she had been to Costa Rica many times, and she came specifically to see this one species of bird, it was a very rare, I think it was a flycatcher, tiny thing, and we finally found it, and he had it in the scope, and mom walked right in front of her, and was like looking in the scope, and she was like, I can't see it, and the lady's like <laughs> having a meltdown, you know, and, and I'm like, you've got to move, you've got to move. <laughs> and then she finally was like, got, she finally got to see the bird. But I was like, oh no, it's going to be very serious. Since everything's open in the restaurants, do the birds come in where you guys yeah. eat stuff? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you see a lot of birds just from eating breakfast. Every time you're anywhere, you can see birds there. Yeah. You know, I mean, because you're looking out, you know, so every, every place is a place to see something new. Yeah. And uh, so you constantly have your binoculars with you, and you know. So maybe think about that. Yeah, you know the birds are showing. Not if you can see some more birds in in Africa. Africa. Yes. Yeah. Well, they were excited because we were we, we were on an ornithological safari in Africa, which most people come just to see the big five, but. We were very excited. They were excited that we were looking at birds. And so it became that when we went from lodge to lodge, they'd say, oh, we know about you. You're the birding group. And they'd say, how many birds do you have on your list? And we'd say, 100. We can see 20 right now. Let's go, you know. And <laughs> well, in the first, in the first week, you had 65 live sightings, right? Yes. The first one yeah. on the lake when we went on the boat um, to see all the, yeah. Yeah. All the, the, yeah, the kingfish, the kingfisher and, yeah. But we had yeah. to watch out for the hippos, right? The hippos, yeah. <laughs> what was that two pan named in, in Africa, Jenny? The one that knocked on the windows? They were, um, they were hornbills. Hornbills. That's hornbills. And then your favorite bird there was the lilac blessed, breasted roller. Yes. Yeah. Roller. yeah. Unfortunately, I know all that's all the Africa photos are like on print or slides. It was all pre-digital, you know. So, oh. yeah. Well, well that's a COVID activity. activity. COVID. <laughs> yeah, we have the we have the video, the the camcorder. You know, the one that you left on the on the plane, mom. Yeah. <laughs> the camcorder in Africa. <laughs> oh my god! And so she like gets off the plane and she's like, oh my god, I forgot the camcorder. So so the guide was like drives of the plane like is taking off and the guide is driving the truck down the runway like out the plane thinking that maybe somehow the plane will stop because he sees the car <laughs> but then he's like i know that man he's a very bad man he will not stop <laughs> he <just took> off. <laughs> and he took off and he took and off then, <laughs> but then you made that poor the man car until the next day yeah but that poor yeah, man had to drive all the way back down that crazy road 
to get to the airport to pick up the camcorder to bring it back to us. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> That's when we stayed at the the, the, the crater, the Nagorogoro Crater Lodge, where I had my own butler. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> wow. That, that place is ridiculous. <laughs> Nina, Nina, you look so different. <laughs> did you get your hair cut? Did you change your hair? To... I did. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's over 100 degrees here, and I got too hot. I just cut it all off. Good for you. Good. It looks adorable. Yeah, Thank it looks you. cute. Very good. Uh, it was just Nina's birthday, too, so happy birthday. Oh, happy, happy birthday, birthday Nina. <laughs> you don't want to tell us how old. <laughs> She's as old as me. Oh! Yeah, you're 24? older than me. 24? <laughs> yes, 24. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. This was so amazing. I have not seen any of those birds, and it's on my wish list. Mm -hmm. yeah. So well, Jenny, thank you back. we have to go back. I know. It's a pretty special place. You haven't seen a Kessel? Oh. No. Yeah. I, I've seen yeah, Trogons in, um, in uh, Arizona. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah, that what an amazing trip you had. I mean, you saw some really special things. Yeah, especially like the snow cap and and yeah. you know going to Rancho the naturally. Mot -mot. The mot mots. Yeah, the I like the record to show that Tara and I did not go. <laughs> Tara is furious. <laughs> Well, we invite you all the time, but yeah, you know. You no. we weren't invited, right, Tara? Right, I'm never invited. Never, never invited. invited. <laughs> when was I was I excited was just to go. Days? You were home alone for 14 days. Yeah, Florida. You. you were home alone. No, you were in Florida. You were in Florida. <laughs> With Jim, right? No, no, he was in you Florida. Were on one side of the road and you on the other. <laughs> Jan, you, you might get me to the Caymans, but you won't get me to Costa Rica for birds. No, why not? Because <laughs> I, I prefer to be under the water than in the yeah. tree. <laughs> yeah, but the, the Caymans, we just, I just got the notice. Did you get to see the letter? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, just uh, the, our friends are retiring, the managers of the, oh. of the it's still going to be running. It's just, yeah. But, uh, but that Susan is going to up the price. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe one of my talks will be on. I'll have to do something on. I just was looking at some of the great video footage I have from uh, scuba diving at the Cayman. So, um, no, no, don't get me wrong. I'd love to watch the birds, but uh, yeah, it's not my <laughs> vacation. Well, there's a lot of birding well, thank that you, you can. Jennifer, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I think that was yeah. Really yeah. Wonderful. Next, next we'll do Grand Canyon, maybe in order in the in in since we're going to be some of us are going to the Grand Canyon. Uh, in November, hopefully, I was going to talk about our rafting adventure down the Grand Canyon. Oh, it's all right. Okay. You think you're going in November? Next month. Next month. Maybe next month. Yeah, as far as we know, we're going in November. It hasn't been canceled yet. Hi, Lillian. Good luck. Good luck with that, yeah. Look at your hair. It's so long. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining, everybody. Oh, thank you. It was great. Great, great presentation. Beautiful. Thank, well, thank you, Jen. Thank you, Jen. It was wonderful. Thanks. Nice right. to see you, everybody. Nice to see you, Karen. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Here, wait, wait, wait. Let me get a picture of whoever left. Hold on. No. <laughs> Got to get a picture. Nice. Thanks, David. <laughs> All right. That was fast. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.